So there you go, that's me making a racket at the hairy dog in Derby, playing Start of War there. So yes, hello and welcome to Near Futurist TV episode 23. I'm going to be having a chat with Saigon Blue Rain in around 10-15 minutes. And I've not got anything planned today. I'm sure there was a load of things that I could be playing by people, but uh, uh, I, I'm, I've not got anything that's immediately struck my attention. So um, I'll have to search just now for someone to play. What, anyone got any ideas? If you happen to be watching, uh, that would be lovely if you've got any suggestions. So in the meantime, I'll, I think I'll get up a, a new Cannibal Fave Waking Dream track, I think, uh, because they said they got a uh, new track they played recently. So uh, uh, I'll get that downloaded for you so we can play it might be a little bit awkward being a live video but hey it's something exciting and new they did not going to be the best quality um, apparently it's called sound of fear so let's see what that's all about <laughs> Waking Dream with the Sound of Fear live in New York, I assume. Definitely over there in uh, the States and played with them in Canada. Love what they do. They're very, very interesting and different. Uh, so let's have a bit of Feather Trade next, I think, as uh, playing live with them as well as Saigon Blue Rain. So let's have Just Like Film from them.
so ending now Saigon Blue Rain uh, just like film I believe that was yes just like not Saigon Blue Rain it's Feather Trade what am I on about yeah that was uh, just like film playing with them as well as Saigon Blue Rain on the 11th of March at the Fulford Arms in York I'll get a poster up for that later uh, but for now let's have a bit more of Saigon Blue Rain of something I've not even listened to it yet so it's going to be very interesting to find out what this one sounds like. This is The Unknown. Liking this already. Saigon Blue Rain to Neo Futurist TV. So, uh, first time we've had someone, I think, from another country on the show. I assume you're. Are you in France at the minute? Yeah, yeah, we're in France. We're in Paris now. In Paris right now. I do know someone else who lives in Paris. Don't know if you've ever seen her at all, Mademoiselle. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, very good electronic artist, so you might appreciate her. So yes, uh, so apparently you were been on the go since around 2014, is it? Uh, 2013. Yes. 2013 has been 10 years. Now. 10 years. Uh, it's uh, quite a while to be. You certainly seem to have achieved a fair bit of success in that time. So you've been on tour recently in Europe and is this going to be your first time in the UK or have you been here a few times? We've been here a few times so we've played uh, one of our first show ever in Sacro at the Sacrosanct in 2014 then we played uh, in Whitby 
two times uh, and uh, we played in Leeds, too, Leeds in York yeah for, uh, for the God City in Leeds uh -huh. uh, we played in York at the Full Fall Arms it was I think six years ago so it's the same venue uh, that we are playing again next, next week yeah and uh, yeah I think that, that, that's it yeah so uh, you were originally uh, formed under the name uh, Stupid Bitch Reject. What inspired the name change to Saigon Blue Rain? What did it see in a different method of doing music or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, when, when we started the band, actually, we chose Stupid Bitch Reject because we didn't really know which direction to take in music and at the beginning our our first songs were more punk more catchy you know? yeah and then after composing our few songs we finally decided to change name because yeah, it was didn't really fit with the music yeah. that was uh, mm. the way it evolves the way it evolved quickly so Stupid Beach Reject. Uh, I think it was a nonsense to continue with this uh, with this name. So mm. we we quickly changed uh, just uh, before the first album. And I mean, obviously, using the same initials. What I, was that? Just a deliberate choice to keep the same initials yeah. there why did you want to keep those initials going yeah because we wanted to get to make a continuity from between the two names and it was still the same band so that for us there was a meaning in it uh, keeping these three letters and um uh, and uh it was kind of magical actually we wanted to to keep those letters because it was like uh, special letters who would bring us some luck or something like yeah. that kind and, of superstition and it certainly helps if people refer to you by those letters they can still keep calling you that so uh, that, that's mm -hmm. handy uh, so what was it that made you choose saigon blue rain then what inspired that uh, you know, there was this kind of uh, uh, fantasy about Asia in the 80s, a new wave, bands like uh, Japan or uh, in France, we have Andochin, which referred to, to this um, to this part of the world, and uh, especially, for example, in Dushin, it, it was the name this this um, this country was um, named after um, by France when it was under a colony of France, and it was this kind of uh, exotic uh, exotic um, figures. So we wanted to to make something. A bit poetical and something a bit nostalgic and <laughs> so nostalgic of these bands of course so we choose it to, uh, we feel that it it was I, quite, quite open to to signif to to meaning to and to yeah yeah, I I think it is a very appealing and alluring sounding name, and definitely suits the more the sort of more electronics infused style that you seem to be going for these days. So, when you transitioned from the more punky stuff, was it was it the attraction of the electronics that made you do that, or did they sort of come with a different uh like you felt you wanted to be something else and so you felt you needed to add the synths was it which way round was it synths came first or the idea of changing the sound came first if indeed you can understand what i'm on about with such, understand. Uh, yeah, with, uh, such convoluted questioning <laughs> yeah no i understand yeah it was a uh, 
the beginning we composing started you write with with guitars and um, since we had something quite new for us at this time in in matter of uh, composing songs and when we discovered this we felt that it was the something that that was more inspiring to us than especially guitars which was for me what was an instrument that i was playing for a long time and and i felt new inspiration with synthesizers so we went on this direction and it helped us uh, to, to it changed the, the sound and the and the atmosphere so it, and Saigon Blue Rain would fit better for for this kind of uh, this kind of music yeah and has it always been the uh, same person of you being on vocals throughout the time of the band and if so, how was the transition from that original style of uh, music to do the vocals alongside the new, more electronics-infused music? When we when we said that we were, it was kind of punky, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the Sex Pistols, or I don't know, no. you know, it was just um, the vocals were not harsh as. Uh, yeah, so did, was, was the vocal style somewhat in the same style then? Yeah. But yeah, just... um, actually, it was it was more harsh, but it was not not that punk actually. But it it was less ethereal. Uh, it became ethereal after later. Um, yeah. But at at the beginning, yeah, it was more catchy, more. more yeah. Because but, actually, mm. uh, there are some demos which were never released of first songs that were more punky, and um, already with the first EP, we we changed on this direction, which that would become our style. So, on the first uh, EP, which is called "Stupid Bitch Reject," there's uh, there is always this kind of style. That we have now so even if we kept a stupid bitch reject for the first ep we could have changed already for saigon blue rain but we didn't felt at the at this point that we need to change and mm -hmm. we, we felt it after maybe just when we released it we say we felt that stupid bitch reject was not um the more accurate uh, name for this kind of music so it was something that we really that we really wanted to change quite fast so yeah yeah and it's i certainly think the the sound you have these days is a, a very appealing one and how would as you are a band that uh, i assume mainly uh, plays in Europe how have you found the differences between the UK performances and those in Europe if indeed there is a difference um uh, actually first time that uh, when when we came to play in in UK it was um, our first gigs because we we just played two two gigs before in France uh, it was the very beginning of the of our of our career of musician in, in Stupid Beach Reject in, in Saigon Blue Rain. So when we when we arrived in UK, it was big pressures pressure for us to to play in UK because we we listened to many bands from the UK. For us, it's one of the best country for music. So it was a big pressure for us to 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 go to 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 the UK. And then when we when we met the audience in in the UK, it was really amazing because they were really expressive and really mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. Uh, and uh, part of these people who are attending to this show we 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 still in contact with them some of them yeah. become our friends mm. so we're super happy to to go back every time in UK because. Yeah. Uh, we know that we will meet people that we met there and mm. it feels like the gothic community in the uk is very 
is very bound together and uh, and um, that people yeah, like there it's like a big whole family and it's very pleasant to to play there yeah have you found it different to playing in europe then i mean what's what's it like the playing live in europe in comparison to the uk depends of the country like germany it's always a pleasure it's a bit i would say a bit like uk yeah. Pe people are very friendly there mm. they come to see us after the show they're yeah they talk with us and they're very friendly too uh, maybe there's a difference i don't know uh, where maybe in france in it's france. not yeah really the same yeah it's not really the same because in france the gothic scene is is small now it's quite small so it's small but mm, people are not th that dedicated to gothic music in france but uh, yeah. we've discussed it with yeah. uh, some booking agents it was the guy who books lots of shows here and he said that it's coming back so i hope that uh, we hope that it will be uh, bigger than what it has been for like uh, this past 20 years mm -hmm. uh, we, we hear that there is a new um, uh, envy for gothic music in, in france and that bands like uh, yeah she passed away in lebanon and hanover they're playing sold out shows in paris mm -hmm. and in so it's uh, good news i would say for for the gothic scene, for the gothic scene mm -hmm. in paris but uh, yeah, talking about the audience, people are maybe a bit less uh, um, reactive here in France than what it is in England or in UK or in uh, Germany. But uh, mm -hmm. and has Brexit proved a, an issue for you in your return to the UK, or has that been successfully negotiated? uh actually we, it will it will be the first time since yeah. brexit so i mean i hope it, there won't be any trouble with the yeah i mean it's a absolutely stupid thing and we absolutely hate it and most of us who are of a reasonably sound mind and i uh, think it's absolute disgrace i mean uh, so many bands that used to come over to the uk now struggling and it's just absolute madness but uh uh obviously don't take it personally but i'm sure you don't anyway but uh yeah hopefully no issues with that and uh, definitely uh excited to see you in york which i have the honor of playing with you so that's going to be interesting yeah, yeah. um we know, we know. yeah well you would with my constant sort of pestering with uh, doing these shows to try and drum up some interest and so forth but i'm sure you'll have plenty just in yourselves so one of my favorite tracks i've heard from you is the mort or the more or whatever it is yeah. uh, yeah. it's a really really driving track so uh, is that one of your favorites i mean is there a favorite track to do live and if so why is it the favorite so, of, oh, there are many of them uh, yeah 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 we like for the moment we were, we were really excited about playing all of the new songs, the new songs uh, yeah, yeah. live so i won't say there isn't a specially favorite but for me uh, i would say that i i really love playing a pantomime which yeah. is a song that is more uh, ethereal mm -hmm. more uh, atmospheric call on this album and uh, but uh, yeah I like to play all the new songs and we have found a new energy playing them and we're super happy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the the energy of the of the new album is very you know it's it's very strong so we yeah we we really really enjoy playing playing them on stage yeah and we're really looking forward to play to play this new album in uk and yeah we hope that the audience will like it is the As, more uh, like is the mort from that one or is that an older track 
No, no, it's a new it's one. It's a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely yeah. love that one. Really, really exciting. Yeah, we'll play it. We'll yeah. play it. Of course, yeah. <laughs> just for me, obviously. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I, I think it's uh, it's got really it's got really good hook to it it really grabs you and drags you in and i think it's very very exciting track absolutely fell in love with it first time i heard it so is there a track that you feel is your set finisher like the one that maybe is the best one to finish on would it be perhaps that one but is there a track that you think is the show closer which is maybe particularly epic or what kind of atmosphere do you go for at the end uh, maybe you will have yeah. to to wait. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. Maybe we'll get the yeah. yeah, we don't want to spoil. Uh, yeah. All, but uh, I, you're quite close to 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 the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers yet, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it might be the more we, but you it couldn't, be. Uh, but you yeah. couldn't Imagine possibly that. comment. <laughs> Uh, so, do you feel there's uh, anything else you might want to add before we uh, wrap things up? And thank you very much for spending this time having a chat about things. Uh, we are just super excited to come back to UK soon. So, already in one week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an exciting, intimate show at the Fourford Arms. It's a, it's a yeah. moderate-sized place, but it's still got great sense of intimacy. So, do you like those gigs where it's maybe a bit more confined, perhaps? Yeah, that have, that uh, greater yeah. connection with the audience, maybe? We have, yeah. we have a great souvenir playing there. Yeah, it was one of our be best experiences, uh, actually. Even if it was, even if it's a small pub, yeah. you know, it's yeah. Very I remember we we met their intimate. Joel Joel, Joel from yeah. Yeah. Joel. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And yeah. we met so so many yeah. great people there and it and was yeah such a good had, energy we had a great evening with the audience we finished yeah. drinking lots of beer after it was, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was cool for me. and we're we're playing also so on the Saturday we're playing in New York and on the Friday we're playing in Morecambe. And the corrosion, yeah, yeah. The corrosion festival, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. That should be a pretty nice one for you. Very nice venue for that, I believe. So mm -hmm. that, that could be a very atmospheric one. Going to be getting up to any tourism, or have you seen all you need to see of this uh, hellhole already? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the, the question. Uh, are you going to be doing any tourism whilst you're here, oh. or have you seen, uh, it, oh. seen uh, enough of this hellhole of a country already? <laughs> we just have time on the yeah. on the, sur on the Thursday mm. when we arrive in UK. Actually, we rarely have time to to, to make yeah. tourism yeah, yeah. <laughs> when when unfortunately, tour. but yeah, but I think we will have time. Yeah, we'll have time. On, uh, before the show in York to visit York because last time we didn't have time to 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 spend uh, even one hour in, in the in York. So mm. oh, one I thing I recall you playing as a four piece band. Is it? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So will, yeah. is that something unusual for you? Then are you more? Are you normally a duo or what's no. the? You are normally playing as a four piece, but it just seemed it was noted particularly that you're playing as a four piece band as if something yeah. unusual. Not, uh, it was like this since the beginnings, yeah. but uh, there was a time when uh, Mathieu, our, our second guitarist, went to live in the US. So at this time, we were only three of us. Mm -hmm. And last time, I think that when we played in New York, we were only three. And now Mathieu is back, so we are again four-piece band yeah. with bass player. So two guitarist and uh, I'm playing the synthesizer too and Matthew is also sharing the synthesizer so um, yeah it will be like this that in in York will be for there will be four of us mm -hmm. well very much looking forward to seeing you any track of yours in particular that you would like me to play on the show and any Maybe, track by well, anyone else um, oh. 
I now have got I want to be you. I think it is lined up. Uh, uh, um, I want to be you. I've got ready. Uh, I just fancied playing that one. But if there's any in particular, any tracks of yours you would particularly like me to play on the show, no um, hard when you put maybe, on the spot. Maybe one one of our last songs. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, Oko. Oko, for example. Yeah. I'll see if I can find that one. One with a video is obviously the ideal. I um, uh, or visions. Oh, yeah. visions. visions. I can pop the video for it. I'll pop visions on. I'll pop uh, that on for you then. Anyway, so thank you very much for spending thank some you. time with me this evening. I can't wait to see you because I found I really really like what you do. So uh, uh, I think thank it's you. going to be a really exciting show in york and uh, uh i've done a tiny url for it tinyurl.com slash saigon york so people can easily find it so that's uh, it's the 11th of march and i can't wait to see you so thank you thank you very much for uh thank the you. interview tonight and i'll see you very thank soon you. Thank, you. thank you looking thank forward you. to to see you next week yes, yes. move swiftly on to the I want to be you track see what we've got there
Well, I'm not really uh, that's ugly. PLC playlist, I don't want that on screen. Anyway, there you go, there's the poster there saying what you're getting. The Fulford Arms, York, 11th of March, and you can go to fulfordarms.com and there's probably a ticket link there. But you can also go to tiny URL, you know, like you are Universal Resource Locator, I think it is, or something, uh, .com slash Saigon York. I thought that'd be something easier for you to remember there, you see, and that'll take you to the ticket link. Anyway, um, what I got up to recently, I went and did a gig in London, and that was really a lot of fun, uh, playing with Sex Bandit and Palin Drones, who were superb, and of course, Punk Disco were ever reliable for being a, a, a great band to play with. No fuss, dead easy to deal with, and great, great music, absolutely brilliant night at the Bird's Nest. And then I went to play possibly my most epic gig to date, uh, playing Supporting Republica somehow wangling getting second on the bill uh, despite being sort of perhaps the least known act there uh, and I wasn't even booked on the bill originally but Saffron did encourage me to go oh look at me name dropping now uh, yeah Saffron encouraged me to ask if I could join the bill so I did and um, because the venue really liked me last time I played they gave me the slot and that was very nice of them and it the audience initially sceptical to the insurrectionary neo-futurism, but by the end, pretty much everyone was cheering and dancing. Well, at least three or four people anyway. But, you know, biggest crowd I've played to, and it absolutely looked epic. The full show was on YouTube. You saw that the start of it, uh, well, you saw a clip from it earlier on in the show. At, uh, that was Start of War, which uh, went down very, very well in my guitar gag. So I had a fairly good bit of guitar playing in that for a change. Um, yes, that, that felt absolutely amazing. Play on a really big stage for a change with great lighting. Uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap things up maybe a touch early. And I just want to play a, a track which, I don't know, just came to mind recently. And I thought it was uh, it's really good. And, oh, and uh, uh, Margaret the Dwig saying I was wonderful, but then uh, she... Well, she's my girlfriend anyway, so she's biased. So, um, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to dedicate that last track to uh, her and want to be you because you know, um, kind of how futurists date, right? Uh, they 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 like make images of looking the same as each other or something. Well, it kind of worked for me. I mean, this isn't the actual image I used at the time, but uh, sort of early on uh, in in knowing uh, the fantastic person I uh, uh, that I do know uh, have entered into a relationship with I'm waffling now anyway I, I, I did an image where I had uh, similarly purple hair and um, said I want to be you or something so you know, later on I created uh, this um glorious bit of photoshop to uh, for it and it sort of uh, disturbingly makes us look like conjoined twins but hey um yeah enough of that sort of thing cut that out later derek uh, <clears throat> uh yeah anyway um final track like just a song that i have had on my mind uh a little biased, but also correct. She says, well, the audience did respond very well to JDB, and we did gain a few new fans. So that's that's really nice, as we, sh as we absolutely should, because we're absolutely fabulous and amazing. Uh, right, so where's this track that I'm going to play? Should I play the video, or I'll play a live performance. Uh, that's what I'll do on TV, though. Uh, this is My Life Story, 12 Reasons Why I Love Her. I've been having a go at singing this recently, and I think I'm, I might be somewhere near okay at it so final track for this evening ending very slightly earlier than normal i want to get off and watch hellraiser too uh, so please come to york to see me saigon blue rain and feather trade and in the meantime 12 reasons why i love her
I'm 